All right, we're back with Carla, the culinary anthropologist. I just gave you a whole title because I feel like, I mean, you, you know, being a chef or a cook or whatever, that's not enough. You know, you, dip, you get into the soil of the heart. So uh, thank you for being here. And uh, so today we're going to talk about grits because actually that was one of the first things we were going to talk about. But then you're like, what about watermelon? What about okra? What about, you know, so it's like everything keeps jumping in front of the grits. Um, I eat grits every, my, my, this is the one thing my father could cook. He was not very domestic, uh -huh. but he loved to cook some grits and eggs and the sauces that you split in half and fry in the, like that was his go-to cheese eggs, grits, and the sausage. That was our Christmas breakfast. That was his duty. And he made it every Christmas. It's amazing. Uh, but he made the white hominy grits. Right. Okay. So that's interesting. I think growing up, I had, we had grits all the time. I don't even remember, what, I mean, just all the time. Because being in Tennessee, I think in South Carolina, it was like rice or grits, right? Rice and then grits, right? I mean, you all were rice first. We were grits all the time, um, mostly for breakfast. And I, I put sugar in them. Ah. <laughs> I know. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> and y'all can at me, at Karen Hunter. Sugar and grits, that's cream of wheat. All right? No, it was a cereal. It became a cereal. Right. right. That's not yeah. grits. Grits is butter, salt. If you do the cheese when you're really, you know, trying to have heart disease, you throw the cheese, all different kinds of cheese. You put some shrimp. You, you know, grits is savory. You don't put sugar on grits, Carla. I'm telling Carla Hall what not to do with her grits. All right, go ahead. I'm on my business. Oh, wait. Okay, so let me tell you about, so as a child, we would, we would do that. We would, uh, I mean, and I'm going to just let you talk, just get this out of your system. So we would also put sugar and butter on our rice. <laughs> you did say that. I, I let that go when we were doing the rice conversation. I'm going to let it go again. That's just, to me, just disgusting. Uh, uh, okay. I know, I know. It's, yeah. And, and you know what the funny thing is? We would do all of that, but yet, why are you putting sugar in my cornbread? Right? It, it makes no sense. It makes, it makes no sense. So, you know, and I think my mother was just trying to get us to eat it. And, and somehow that became the thing. Um, I'm sure it had something to do with my mom. Why would we even think to put sugar in grits? Well, I've heard a lot of people put sugar on their grits and, and, and but was it a whole teaspoon? Was it like, was it a lot or was it just a no, little sprinkle? just a little sprinkle okay. with the butter. Yeah. So it's yeah. sort of like how you put salt in the water before you make something that like put a little salt in, like when I make my oatmeal, I'll put a little salt right. in the water oh, yeah. and then I put some maple syrup on my oatmeal. So it's the salty with the sweet, with the... Yeah, I mean, to your point, it was, we were making a cereal out of these grains. So cream of wheat, oatmeal, grits, rice, we were making a cereal out of them, okay. you know? All right. And so when you think of it like that, but my grandmother for special occasions. So um, I don't, I don't remember if it was Christmas, but we would have um, glorified grits. Do you have you had that like a grit souffle? No. So she, you, oh, you've never had that? Never had oh, a no, my grit. Never. Tell me. Oh my God. So my, my grandmother had a souffle dish. It's like one of those big porcelain round straight side, that white dish, right? Um, and it was about this, this tall. And she, we would have, she would have, oh, we, I, wouldn't, I wasn't cooking. She would have the grits, which were cold. And she would take the grits and then mix in the egg yolks and the cheese. And then she would take the egg whites and beat those and then fold that into this mixture and grease this pan and put the grits in there. And then when it baked, the grits would rise up and it was so light and so fluffy. And that was like glorified grits. It was a grit souffle, but we didn't call it souffle. So when I went to culinary school, I didn't have a name. It was just glorified grits. And so when we started doing a souffle, I'm like, oh, that's a sou that's like glorified, right? So I didn't have the language. And it was like, <laughs> but yeah, delicious. That sounds delicious. Okay. 
the history of the grit. Because I, I'm, I'm now, I, I, I feel like I, the grit, the one grit uh, that we've made into grits. Where the hell did it even come from? Because again, growing up, and I have a, a horrible story. So I had two grandmothers, which most of us have, that I knew, right? My mother's mother cook her face off. My father's mother, not so much. So from time to time, I had to stay at my grandmother's house because my parents were like party animals. I think they were, I'm telling too much of their business, but they were young parents. So they were always kind of, I was always somewhere, which is probably why I'm very independent. I'm like, I'm raising myself. Where are these people? So I stayed at my grandmother's in Newark. And she was one of these very robust, zoptic women who used to like literally beat her children to eat because growing up with her, if your children were thin, you were a bad parent. So in poor neighborhoods, I'm, I'm getting this history now, in poor neighborhoods, if your children were skinny, it made everyone believe that you were poor, people yes. knew you were poor, and that you were somehow a bad parent. Unfortunate for my dad, he couldn't gain weight. So he would get beaten with a spoon to eat. So he had a big, like big platters of food. All of the boys in the, in the family could not gain weight. All of the women would blow up, right? So they were good girls. And my father, you know, was tortured as a child to be beaten to eat oh my because God. he was skinny, right? So I'm staying at my grandmother's house. She made grits with every, every breakfast. You know how grits have those dark specks in it? Yeah. Okay, so the plate comes and I'm like, um, Grandma, there's something in the grits, right? And she, child, eat that food, them the specks, them the specks, just eat it. And I'm like, the specks got legs on them. I'm not, so yeah. Are those weevils? No, I think they were little baby roaches, but I'm, I'm telling too much, but that's, yeah. So I did not eat those grits and I had a bad experience after that and wouldn't eat grits. For a while, for most of I my think time. They're, I think they're weevils. Grits would get weevils. weevils. Okay, well, the specs had legs on them, and I wasn't eating it. Right. So, anyway, <laughs> long story short, that ru ruined my whole grit experience until I became an adult, and then I discovered polenta. So, that's my grit story. I'm going to move on. So, no, tell me you, you know what? What I love, and I, I've been thinking about this in terms of grits and um, polenta, and, and it's all corn, but it's processed differently. And you were saying that you didn't like grits because you, you wanted more flavor and you thought that the yellow corn was more nutritious than the, um, than the white grits. And the hominy. That's what the that's hominy. Right? hominy. Yeah, hominy. But, you know, actually, you don't really find real hominy grits now. They just... You know, because that has another process to make hominy. You have, you know, you have to take the corn and uh, the native indigenous were the ones who actually um, had this method of taking the hulls off the corn through, and I'm going to mess this word word up. It's nixtilit, um, what is it? Um, nixtamilization, where they take okay. the lye and they boil the corn in the lye and then you, it, the, the husk comes off and so it's, it's softer and then they think dry about, think it about that out. For a second. Think about as somebody that cooks, right? That folks a thousand years ago, let's just, you know, had enough wherewithal to take this plant, right? You can boil it, it's delicious, you can eat it. But they were the first to make popcorn, right? They knew to take the seeds with oil in a pot, cast iron, and pop it. They stripped the hull off of it grounded up with a process that now takes this whole factory and chemicals and all to strip it and grind it up into a grain that can be cooked up into a porridge or i mean you think about how we eat today when we go to the store and just get something off the, like our ancestors were were freaking geniuses i just want to say it yeah i mean and and this work karen a lot of this work was done by women so, and there is something, and, and I'm not the one to really speak to it, but I feel like you should get a native indigenous to come on and really talk about the, the connection and the relationship of corn being a very spiritual thing um, with the native indigenous. And there's a chef, um, they call him the Sioux hmm. chef, the S-I-O-U-X. And his wow. name is Steven, I will, I, will look, I will look it up. Um, 
but Definitely. it's time to get back to these indigenous foods and and create and fill the holes of trying to um, get back to what his people ate. And the reason that it's so hard is we were talking about sharing recipes and giving them away, but so much was taken from the native indigenous that they stopped sharing. That's why we don't have their history and their culture, a lot of it, because they're like, okay, you you just gave me an assignment that I'm more than equipped to, to follow through on because as you're talking, I'm also remembering, you know, that there was an exchange when the Africans sailed here before Columbus because on some of the hieroglyphs, and I've talked with Dr. Carr about this off mic, there is maize, which doesn't grow in Africa. So there right. was, that had to be an important vegetable for them to share with the Africans. They brought it back and they're on hieroglyphic, uh, uh, carvings in you know in Egypt right this vegetable yeah so there must be something really powerful about this corn right and it's something very very magical and to to be able to, to share that something that is so sacred and think about that something that is so sacred that is shared is really special too because you found I mean hundreds and hundreds thousands of years ago you would find it in North Africa and then south not so much in West Africa but, um, but yes, you would find it. So, so when you think about it, so the, this, this, this culture of maize and, um, and then the, the settlers or the Europeans come, you know, to Virginia and who is there, but the native indigenous. And so you have them sort of coming together over food because, language barriers and everything. So that's the, the ultimate equalizer. And by the way, I want to say that this, I read this book on grits and it was about, it's the, the culture of grits, but it's by this woman, Erin Byers Murray. And she lives in Nashville and she did a deep dive into grits. And it's, it's actually an amazing, it's an amazing book. And, um, and she talks to some of everybody. She talks about race and culture and, and all of this. Um, but so here you have these people and then they're sharing food. And, and when you talk about grains, it, it, it's called grist in Europe, right? Grist, G-R-I-S-T. And so there are these different, in, uh, different. Um, so when, uh, when we say that grist for the mill. Grist for the mill. Why am I today years old and I'm just now realizing the connection between that and grits? Thank you. Okay, continue. Wow. So when, when the word got changed, so the, and, and even the words that the native indigenous had, but it was white people who basically changed the word, made it into grits. And because they were the holders of the pen, they're the ones who recorded it. That's where we got the word. And so now here you are in the South, so you're in Virginia and now you're in the South, right? And so when, when the, the people had come from Africa and were enslaved, this became part of their culture because it was something that was fed to the enslaved to fill them up. So now you, you had the native indigenous, and now you are giving it to the enslaved, so it becomes part of the black culture, right? That and and this is when um, the grits were were made, and then it became industrialized. So it's it's changed all of these uh, incarnations of grits, right? And so then it started spreading north, the Great Migration. So grits are grits are all over, everywhere, everywhere everywhere um you had the um polenta was before the, before the industrial before the industrial age you were grinding the grits with stone right so it was cold and what you don't like in these white grits so let's say they're maybe quaker oats grits or um who Aunt Jemima grits, are they gonna change that name? So these, these, it's three, three companies. 
and they use um, these very hot steel grinders and, and they're also other um, stabilizers and, and additives. And so by doing the steel, all the flavor of the corn goes away. So it's not that you don't like white grits, you don't like those Dripping industrialized away. grits. And because polenta is, corn, it's a different corn. So polenta uses flint corn and grits is dent corn. It's a cold press. It's a cold press and stone. So by keeping the kernels cold, the flavor remains and it's the process. So when we think, and it's really fine and it, and it goes through three different processes of being stone ground. I love the red mills. I think I, I use red mills, uh, polenta uh, mm -hmm. I'm, and make it really creamy with no butter. No, right. Yeah. I don't, cause I'm, you know, I'm dairy free in my diet now. And so I had to find a way to make it creamy and delicious without cream and butter and all of the things, you know, so I know that's probably blasphemy to you. No, it is not. Actually, I love that. In my book, Carla Hall Soul Food, I talk about making grits without cream because if I'm bringing it back to us, black people, black cooks, women, when you think about it, we are lactose intolerant. So why would cream be in our grits? Child, hello. Yes. Right, I mean, we could think about that Gullah Geechee culture and getting that shrimp that's, that's fresh and, and they're yeah. making the grits. I mean, if you were to take our culture back and say, what do our bodies need? What would we naturally be eating? What would we naturally be not, not be eating, right? And so I make the grits um, with just water and a bay leaf. Salt. Thank you. My saltiness comes from, I'll do like some sockeye salmon and onions. And you know, when, you know, that's my, more than shrimp, I love the salmon and grits combination. And the saltiness from the, from the salmon, from the sockeye salmon. Yes. You know, yes. That's enough, you know, and you make your grits, you know, the polenta gets really, really, you can cook it well really creamy if you you know use enough water and let it you know stir it a lot you know it's all in the process so yeah i'm sorry yeah. go ahead yeah. no i'm just when you're saying that i'm just like oh my gosh yes when you put enough water and i just get so excited about grits but also <laughs> when i when i went down to south carolina and i spoke to a chef bj dennis and i'm and, and BJ Dennis does a lot with Gullah Geechee culture and I'm talking to his mom and, and there's a profile of him in my cookbook. And I'm talking to his mom about what she ate as a child. And that's when the aha moment, like why have I been having grits with all of this milk and cream and cheating? And, and by the way, when you go to a restaurant and you want grits and you're like, can I see the grits? If I look over at a bowl, it looks like soup. I don't want those grits. I'm like, they're using quick grits and there's no such thing as quick grits because you still have to cook them a long time. So for me, I started using cold water. Now that may feel blasphemous to people, just like, because I love oatmeal. And I said, if I, if I love oatmeal and I love creamy oatmeal and the way that I get my oatmeal creamy is to put it in cold water and have the water come up to the boil versus hot water and the oats will be separate shouldn't it be the same for grits so this is how i was thinking and true enough i started making my grits in cold water when i um and then they come up to a bowl i make sure they're stirred you have enough water so that the grit you have to have enough water so that the grits have space to expand right and then by by having them in the cold water they are expanding slowly and therefore becoming creamy. Mm. Now, do, how much salt do you put in your water? I put enough salt to taste it so it tastes like the sea. Okay. All right. And do you steam it? Because I put enough water in so that I'm actually steaming so my grits are fluffy. So uh -huh. I put the top on, put it on simmer and let it just really... Yes, yes. And another thing that you can do, especially if you have the stone ground grits, um, is to toast them. So you can put, uh, just toast them in a pan, like okay. dry pan. 
and then you can put water like your four it's like four parts water to one part grit so these are the stone grounds so the coarse grits and let them soak for an hour overnight and then come back because now oh. while they're soaking then you bring them up to the boil and they're going to be really creamy okay that i will be trying thank mm -hmm. you for that i will not be putting sugar in the milk okay All no right. i don't put sugar in mine now oh but let me tell you what i do I will sometimes, if I know that's going to be for a savory dish, I will use half water, half stock. So if I do chicken stock, um, you're making yours with salmon. If you have, uh, well, not salmon, but if you have like shrimp stock, if you're doing shrimp, the, something that Edna Lewis, now Edna Lewis, um, we all know Edna Lewis and, you know, the infamous chef from New York, she would do a shrimp paste. And so she would make this shrimp paste and then stir that like a butter into the grit. So there would be this pink color. Mm. And, and she, like, if you take shrimp shells and you almost like a bisque and you're cooking them and then you puree them and you have this really intense stock and then you have the shrimp and you have this beautiful paste and you stir that into the grits, it's going to give you, you don't need a lot of salt. And it's going to give you that beautiful flavor that permeates through the grit. So there's so many different things that you can do. What's your favorite shrimp dish that you make? And then what's your favorite that you eat? Because I imagine that you make things that aren't necessarily the favorite thing to eat, but yeah. you can cook it really well. So, you know, when I was doing soul food, I realized, I mean, I'm, I'm from, um, a town in well Nashville, it's landlocked. So, I mean, we did, we did catfish. I, I'm not a big seafood. I don't love seafood, so I don't love shrimp. Right? I'll eat it, but I don't I don't crave shrimp. Um, but I will make shrimp and grits, and I will make it honoring B.J. Dennis and his mom. And you know, when it's really clean, because I'm thinking. Um, you know, those beautiful shrimp out of the water, sweet. And I sear them really quickly. I do peppers and fresh tomatoes and garlic and a little bit of thyme and a splash of water. And I, and I stir all that up. I don't, I don't put a lot of butter and fat. I'm not making a big gravy. And then I take those grits with bay leaves and salt and they're creamy because they've been cooked long enough. That, that is, my really clean shrimp and grits dish, which I actually like, but my favorite, favorite way to eat shrimp. Grits. Grits. Grit. You were, you were asking me about uh, grits. You, know, you, said you, shrimp. Said shrimp. you said shrimp. You said your favorite way to eat shrimp. My so favorite, going, I thought you were asking about my favorite way to eat shrimp, but maybe you meant grits, but my favorite way to eat grits. Grit. Did I say that? Damn it. I meant grits. Sorry, That's why I'm talking about three, shrimp. Oh, wait, 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 because you just did a dance and dancing and food with black people, you know it's good when you, when you are dancing, when you are eating or thinking about eating. When you start dancing, you know it's good. So tell me the shrimp and then you tell me but the I'm grits. Gonna, then I'll tell you the grits. So the, in my cookbook, when I, when I worked in the Bahamas, there was cracked conch and they would take conch and they would beat it. And so we don't really have fresh um, conch here so i take shrimp and do the same thing so i pound it and then i bread it i put it in egg and flour and then i sear it so the shrimp is is it's it's like so succulent and it's so delicious and so i would have i would prefer that with my grits my favorite way to eat grits honestly is just plain like i talked about with the bay leaf cooked really creamy my second favorite way for the holidays is the glorified grits that my grandmother made which is amazing i love it i love it i love it all right before we go um what else did you discover about the grits that we should know um because i i always i never even thought about the indigenous connection even though when you said it it was like corn of course mm -hmm. i didn't know that grits really came from corn i didn't know where the hell they came from just yeah. grits. You get a bag, you know, it was cheap. You know, you get a bag from the store, the hominy or whatever back in the day. And now, you know, I'm fancy I'm doing a polenta, you know, you just buy the bag and you, you know, and I know that that's corn, but I didn't make the connection until you just really talked about it. It makes perfect sense. But 
tell us some, just a couple more tidbits about the connection to black folk. Yeah, so I think that, um, and you mentioned getting fancy, and I think that um, grits, like the process, I talked about the women making grits, and then that baton was turned over to women, and, and, and grits are part of our culture, and Edna Lewis, and all of these female chefs, and, and, and even the enslaved pounding their own grits, making them, right? And that was a woman's job. And as we get to now, some of these white male chefs were the ones who like, oh, grits, oh, I'm into grits now, you know, like Sean Brock and, and some of these other people. And, and, and all of a sudden grits became expensive. But, <laughs> I mean, so you, you have this one thing that was just a filler and then it was industrialized, which was what we were left to have. But I, I, you can't talk about grits without talking about Glenn Roberts with Anson Mills. And he started realizing that we were losing these, these strains of corn. And so he started to gather these seeds and, have, and he, he doesn't sell the seeds. He gives them away freely to farmers so that they can have these seeds and growing this corn and, and, and different things. You know, Anson Mills. So he, his plant is in South Carolina, in Columbia. And the sous chef that I talked about went to him, to Glenn Roberts at Anson Mills to get the purple grits, the purple corn that the native indigenous were using because he has taken these strains and these grains and, and kept the seeds. And, and now he gives them away freely, never sells them. So I think that, and this is a white man who has made this a passion project, but so now you have all of these, our culture, which all of a sudden we have forgotten about the women, right? And the, and the black culture and the native indigenous. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh my God, I love grits. Oh my God, Sean Brock is all into grits and everything. But I'm, again, giving something away freely and then somebody takes it. And so you have to talk about appropriations and what, what does that mean? And, and, but also we can't talk about these without talking about the native indigenous but what we did with them and how we, we changed hands and how we made that so much a part of our culture. And this becomes a very complicated story about the native indigenous. The, the, the company Geechee Boy Grits, I mean, it's a white company, but there was a man named um, Raymond Tumbleston who had a store uh, in the Gullah Geechee region. And but this was a white man who was called Geechee Boy and so even that story becomes kind of complicated because when you think Geechee Boy, you think of a black person, right? Absolutely. So now you have this company, Geechee Boy, that is um, a white company from a store of a white man. And for me, it felt a little bit like Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Are there any black people that make grits that you, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, part of this journey is also discovering. I had um, Eat Okra. Uh, it's an app that- uh, Yes, I have Eat Okra. Oh my God, I, I love it. Oh, I travel I with Eat Okra. Okra. I was gonna connect you with them because they're doing something that you've been touting for a while, which is to reclaim and make sure that we can go get authentic ingredients from the people that are authentic. Eat Okra. Yes, Eat Okra is an amazing app. It is, uh, whenever I travel, I put in the app and looking for black restaurants, where to eat, where to um, go and find a company or business to connect with. It is, it is incredible. And um, yeah, somebody had, I was at, I was at um, like some event and somebody told me about Eat Okra, I think about four years ago. It is it is an amazing, amazing app. And the, the work that went into the, um, the um, oh my God. So they're doing all the legwork for you, right? Exactly. The research yeah, and the legwork for you. Base. 
Yeah, no, it's a, it's a powerful. I just had him on a Tech Tuesday, and I was like, oh, Carla Hall. Every time he was, I was like, Carla Hall. I, I just somehow knew that you either knew them or you must know them or you should know them if you don't. And I need to know them. I just know the app. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce. That's gonna be another. Uh, I need, need to make that connection because I think part of this is also reclaiming, re reclaim. You know, how Maxine reclaiming our time. We have to reclaim it. You know, it's not just gonna be given back. Oh, here, this is yours. Here. Oh, oh, we, I stole this. Here, here, have it. No, we're gonna have to excavate, dig up and reclaim the things that, that belong to us, but more importantly, then spread it back out properly. You know what I'm saying? You're making a connection, indigenous. Then it came to us. And, and you know, that story has to be told properly. So, you know- Right, it important. has to be told, but even, but when you think about it, even the name, even the name got skewed. Geechee right? Boy. Grit. No, but I'm talking about back to oh, the no, name no. Grit. Even the name Grit. grit. Yeah. Right? What, what, I wonder what the native people called it. Uh, let me, let me look, let me see if I can find it. I, um, part of me, <laughs> keep talking. Cause I, I it's I'm doing that. Really yeah. Cause I, I have homework to do. I, I have to reach out to Aaron Byers Murray. Thank you for that. And, and I have to go find the sous chef, uh, yes, and, and maybe yes. introduce him to him. Uh, but yeah, I think it's super important that we start to, you know, share these stories and, and I'm, you know, these conversations are breadcrumbs. I keep saying that, you know, this is not, you know, a complete oral history of blah, blah, blah. This is like, okay, I didn't think about that that way. Now let me go read this book and let me go follow right. this person and let me discover, you know, all of the things that I want to know about it. Cause what I want to know, maybe you don't want to know, you know, right. so we're within but this conversation. This Exactly. And then once you find one thread, you, you keep pulling. And that's why I'm saying there's so much to just grits themselves that we can discover. Um, so their European name was grist, as we know. The um, ground grains, grit, G-R-Y-T-T -T for brand. And this comes from Aaron's book, Grits. And, and griot for ground. So... Mm -hmm. So the grits from that morphed, was a word that slowly morphed into the colonized, uh, recorded and mainstream consciousness. So it's like going into a culture and taking their thing and having like, do you have a flag? <laughs> and <laughs> make it in <laughs> a thing, <laughs> you know, and make it a thing. And so that's when grits, and the enslaved came together because it was 17th century, early 17th century. Do you have a flag and now you must kneel? Now we must kneel when you wave it. Anyway, I just think that's interesting. Carla Hall, thank you. Um, you have a podcast coming out September 15th. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about it. So say yes with Carla Hall. I'm talking to various um, celebrities and people that you, whom you think you know, but they have this backstory, which is really interesting about how they have been comfortable with being uncomfortable to propel themselves forward and, um, and saying yes. Why, why do you want to do a podcast? I love radio. I love, I mean, you, you know, I love talking to people. I, I love, I, I think one of my gifts is that I actually love people and, you know, and when the, the medium of radio and hearing people without the pictures, I've always been fascinated with. And I think, and even when I do this, my podcast and we're on zoom, but I said, turn the cameras off because I don't want you to worry about looking at yourself. I just want you to, to be able to focus and just talk, not wondering where you're looking or how you're looking and to really get at that person. But for me, it's all about understanding the backstory of a person and being able to talk to people in long format. Well, I, I think I've captured that in this, in this video uh, realm because I feel like, you know, we have done so much with filters and fillers and Botox and, Die, you know, everybody, no one looks the way they look. And I'm like, I'm just pressing record. I just got up. Girl, 
Look, I need some lipstick. Yeah, I mean, who, who cares? Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. This is how we look. Uh, and if you have a comment about somebody's appearance, you're not going to get the goodness here. God right. help you. You're wasting time on this earth, and it's there's no value to you. So we're going to just keep doing this this way. I, I hope it resonates with folk, and, and definitely given a lot of grist for my mill today. You see how I did, did that? I did. All right. I see Call how you did that. I see I how you did that. Uh, follow her. No, Go thank ahead. you I'm for sorry. being an agitator. Just thank you for being an agitator. It is so needed and so welcomed. And you you are the ultimate teacher. So, And I appreciate you. I receive that because I'm really bad at receiving compliments. But I will say this, you know, I find it odd to be thankful for something that I really feel I was put on this earth to do. And I think that so many of us do not follow where our spirit is leading us. So you can't thank me for doing something that I'm going to do, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so you're welcome. You know, you're welcome. But, you know, I, this is joy. Just like you you love people. I love them, too. I, I love them to their best selves. So we're going to we're <laughs> just going to keep going. And part of this journey is about pressuring me, too, to be better. You know, so you know, I'm not going to ask of anyone what I'm not asking of myself and that I'm not challenging myself every day. And I think, you know, that that's as hard as you may think I am, you got to know that I'm equally, if not more so hard on myself, because you only get one shot, one bite of this apple, as far as I know. Now, some of y'all may have come back, you used to be kings and queens a thousand years ago, I don't remember my prior life. But <laughs> you, yeah, I did. No, for real? Carla, no, really? I was in, I was in Egypt. Uh, I went to Egypt, and I was doing a meditation in the, in the Great Pyramids, and and I remembered falling when I was working on the pyramids. What? All right, we're gonna have to do this in a whole, stop it. Okay, well, I don't remember being here before and I don't know if I'm coming back after this. So I'm gonna make the most out of this little bit of time. If I get 120 years, that's still just a blip on the screen of like life. I'm gonna try to make the mama wring the rag dry and I'm gonna make as many grits as I possibly can. I'm just playing. Yeah. We definitely gonna have a conversation about you and the pyramids falling white. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Call I, be, I believe in reincarnation. So I, I, yeah. How many times do you think you were here? Many times. I don't okay. know how many, many times. Well, I mean, that follows that, you know, what is it? Uh, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Matter cannot be created nor, nor destroyed. So you're always going to matter in some realm. Okay, I'm gonna have to process that. All right, I'm out of here. I got I got a lot to meditate on. <laughs> Carla Hall, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And y'all get your grits and don't put the butter and the eggs and cheese, all that crap in there. Just eat it naturally and keep your heart yes. healthy. Yes. Love you.